Hello, and welcome back. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I've had a few requests for, like, beginner tutorials of Tinkercad, and I just want to help you guys out. <laughs> Instead of saying, like, this is how you do this, this is how you do that, go do this, don't do that, whatever, you know, I think that it'll be easier if I just show you, and, like, if you want to, you can work along with me, and then you'll see how easy it is to come up with these designs. Right now I have three or four designs that we can work on together. It'll be one per video. Just to, like I said, just to show you how easy it is. And uh, they're nothing incredibly difficult to make. This very first one is going to be a remote holder for like, uh, if you have a Hisense TV, it'll hold the remote, but it, it hangs on the wall so you know that it's out of the way which I think, you know, will be interesting. It'll be easy, but, you know, get you the basics, I guess. Also, I'm recording the audio and the video at the same time. I'm used to recording the video, then coming back and narrating what I'm doing. That way, my train of thought is direct, so just bear with me, because I might stray. I have not made a video live, I guess, live narration yet. So I'm still a little bit uh, getting used to that, kind of talking to myself as I work. Anyway, <laughs> like I said, just bear with me. So a couple things to note. If you are new to Tinkercad, a lot of people ask me this, um, where they download it from, you know, how do you download Tinkercad, I can't find it to download, or some of you even found a download for Tinkercad, which delete immediately, <laughs> because it is, it, Tinkercad is not a piece of software that you download, it's a website, you work directly in your browser, all you do is go to Tinkercad.com, sign up, and there you go, you start creating right there. So, we're gonna go, I know I'm already in, but we're gonna go, you can see all my designs here. When you create an account, you won't have all of these. These are my past designs, some of you may recognize. Anyway, you're gonna go up here and click Create New Design. I've already done that, I've got this right here. So if you do wanna go back to a project that you've already created, go to Tinker This right here, or if it's brand new, click Create New Design. Now, Tinkercad auto names them for you, but you can click right here and change the name. So we're gonna change this to Remote Holder because that's what we're gonna make here. Now, before we get started, this is your work plane. I do have a habit of calling it the bed, just because, you know, the on your printer you call it the bed. So that kind of sticks in my head, printer bed instead of work plane. So if you hear me say the bed, I'm referring to the work plane. Okay, I will try to be as clear as possible in what I'm doing so you can follow along. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll, you know, try to answer to the best of my ability. So, the most important thing you want before you start designing is an idea. You can jot down, you know, designs, but you want to have an idea of what you're making. Now, we are making a remote holder which could look like anything. It could be a square. It could be a cylinder, it'd be strange, but it could be a cylinder. But what I want to use is neither of these, it's the round roof. In my head, I think it'll look good like that, so we're going to use that. But the first thing we're going to do is grab a square. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's me from the future. And I kind of forgot one important thing for beginner users of Tinkercad, and that is camera movement. It's really second nature to me, so it's easy for me to overlook it. You know, I just assume that <laughs> you know what I'm doing. <laughs> but afterwards, I thought, you probably don't if you've never used Tinkercad. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the camera controls, and you should familiarize yourself with the movements. Uh, grab any object over here, bring it out, and, you know, just kind of look around it. So all of the camera movements are in the right mouse button except for zooming in and out. That is on the scroll wheel. You go forward to zoom in, backwards to zoom out, or up or down, whichever you prefer. And then, you know, you can quickly press the right key. I'm sure you can hear me clicking, because this is live narration, to move the camera around. And if you want to go in a straight line, up or down, you hold the shift key, and then you can do that. That's pretty much it. 
that is the majority of what you'll be using anyway. The right key, like I said, hold it down and then, you know, kind of flick it and you'll spin in either direction. The mouse wheel zooms in and out and then hold the shift key to move in a straight line up or down or diagonal or, you know, whatever. Because you can't move side to side with just the right mouse button. You gotta hold the shift key. All right, now I'm gonna go back to the video. Hopefully that was quick enough for you to understand. If you have any questions, like I said, leave them in the comments and I will answer as fast as I can. All right, back to it. But the first thing we're gonna do is grab a square we are going to put the dimensions of the remote in here. I'm rounding up a little bit because I want a little room. So I'm going to say it's 23 deep by, let's go 48 wide. So we're going to take this, pull it up a little. Uh, I didn't measure the length of the remote. It doesn't really matter. But I do know that I want the remote holder to be somewhere around 85 millimeters tall because that is about a third or so of the remote. That way, you know, it doesn't fall out. Anyway, let's put that to the side. Now we can grab our round roof, turn it up 90 degrees, which you can do that way. Or if you wanna have a finer degree, kinda what I do is just click and move up. You gotta hold the mouse key and then play around there and you can get finer angles. Or you can just click the box and say 90 degrees. Now we're gonna put it level with the bed, the work plane, the bed, and the way to do that is to drag it up. You can see when you're level with the bed because this will be all zeros. So like if it's a one, which you could type in there if you wanted it one millimeter above the bed, now we are one millimeter above the bed. But if you want it to be even with the bed, just make it a zero, and there you go. Now, we're gonna make this a hole and then if you hold the shift key and drag one of these dimensions, everything moves with it. So we're going to go big enough to where our remote will fit in there. Because this is going to end up being the negative space in the remote holder. So we want this to be as big or a little bit bigger than our remote dimensions here. So we're just going to hold shift and keep going until it fits inside there. And you can highlight them both and align them to the center. And then you just keep on dragging a little bit at a time until you know that your remote will fit in there. And you want to have plenty of space on the back and plenty of space in these corners. Now it is a little bit much, so we can, if you just click one side, don't hold shift, come back a little bit. We still should have plenty of room. As you can see, we have that much room in the back and that much room on the sides. I think that's pretty good. We can pull this away, put this aside. Now let's make this taller than our 80, let's say 85, but let's go with this 90. Now we're going to make a duplicate of this and then we're going to turn it solid. Now this is going to become the, the shell, the, the outside, the walls of the remote holder as you'll see here so we want to take this and make it hold the shift key and make it just a little bit bigger maybe i don't know 10 10 more was that 10 <laughs> let's uh bring this back well actually let's drop this down to we want it about 80 85 height so let's bring these together and see if we have a good enough wall. I think that uh, the back could be a little thicker. So what we're going to do is grab it again and stretch just a little more and center them this way and this way. And that looks pretty good. It's a little thick on the edges. So we could come down some and let's align them again I still want a little more thickness on this back wall so let's make it just a little bit thicker okay 79 by 38 all right now let's make sure we are aligned we are already aligned this way let's align it this way 
and that looks pretty good. So once you're happy with the thickness of the walls, we can go ahead and group those. Now you see what happened? We ended up making it go all the way through, which we didn't want. So let's ungroup those. Now we know this is level with the bed, the negative space. So let's pull it up three, whoops, three millimeters. You can see here we're at four. You can click here, like I said, go to three. Now we know we're three millimeters above the bed, which means we're three millimeters above the bottom of the walls because we know that the walls are on the bed. So let's go ahead and group those, and now we have a bottom. So our remote won't just, you know, slide all the way through. Anyway, what we uh, need to mount this to the wall is some holes on this backside. And we also need a way for our screwdriver to get through to those holes. Now we could just put two holes all the way through, that's fine, perfectly fine if that's what you want. But what I want to do is something a little more stylistic. So we're going to grab a box, pull it up, make this. Well, let's go with 10. Pull it up again, three millimeters to be level with the bottom. And then highlight them both. And we will align that to make sure that it is at the center. And then we can go ahead and group those. Now, my opinion, this looks a little better than just having two holes in the front, but it's entirely up to you how you want to do it. But now we do need to make those holes in the back. So the way that I do this is to grab a cylinder, turn the sides all the way up. Let me show you here. I'll turn it to a solid so I can show you what happens if you don't turn the sides all the way up. So let's say they're, the sides are all the way down. You see how it's not like a smooth circle anymore? The amount of sides makes it more of a smooth circle. So I like to just turn it all the way up. Okay, let's turn that back to a hole. And I'm going to hold shift again. This depends on your screws. I know the majority of my screws, uh, the diameter of five will, you know, be just fine enough. So I'll hold shift, drag it into five, make this a little bit taller. And then so that I can have these screws countersunk, I'm going to make a duplicate of this, pull it up some, and then make this seven, and align those, and then we can group that, and now we have kind of a peg looking thing. Let's turn that on a 90, and then we can go ahead and duplicate that, pull it up, oh, I don't know, about... Yeah, that should be a good enough difference. And then let's highlight those two and group them. That way we know they're always aligned. Now let's pull that over. And if we come back here and we put that outer circle just on the back part, we'll know that we can go in one millimeter, two millimeters. Actually, two might be a little too much, so we're going to go negative 1.5. That means we're, the countersink will be 1.5 millimeters deep. So let's go ahead and highlight everything and align those so that they are center. Now you don't want to center them this way because they'll come back out, you see? So don't do that. You can hit Control Z to back up or this is a back and forward arrow. Now we're happy with that, so we're gonna go ahead and group that. And now you can see We've got plenty of area to countersink the head of the screws. Now you could leave it like this and it'll work just fine. It looks fine, uh, albeit a little boring. So I'm just gonna add a little something else to, you know, for stylistic purposes. So I grab a box and I'm gonna hold the shift key and then pull this up so that it is much bigger than the remote holder. And then we are going to drag it up and then tilt it a little bit make sure we're not cutting off that hole yep that looks good and then we're gonna go ahead and group those there you go it's a little bit you know better looking let's make sure our height is still good 71 should be plenty the remotes not gonna fall out of there 
It adds a little bit of a different look to it, so it's not, you know, so boring. Nothing's wrong with the other way. It's just a little bit boring in my opinion. <laughs> so that's it. We're pretty much done designing. Now, if I had done this without narrating everything, I could have been done a lot sooner. This is literally could have taken me five minutes tops. And I'm telling you that to show you how quickly you can make these simple designs in Tinkercad. For things like this, to me, it's unbeatable. I mean, if you're familiar with the paid software like Fusion 360 and that, and you can do this in three to five minutes, by all means, stick with it. You know, whatever works for you. But if you're brand new to 3D designing, Tinkercad is, it's unbeatable. It's free, most importantly, and it's really user friendly. You know, everything's nicely laid out for you. You know what you're clicking on. Everything is easily controlled, like all your dimensions. Like I said, if you just hold shift, it moves everything. So, I mean, why not? As a beginner, why not? Even an intermediate. I've been designing things for, I don't know, a year now, and I still use Tinkercad. It has served me for everything I need so far. I haven't made anything yet that I needed some expensive software or some crazy in-depth software or whatever. Tinkercad works just fine. Okay, so now that I'm done rambling, <laughs> let's go ahead and you're gonna click export and you're gonna export it as an STL. And then from there, you're gonna load it into your slicer of choice and then go ahead and print it. So I'm gonna go ahead and print that. I'm not gonna time lapse it because I don't want this video to be, you know, too long. But we're gonna jump over to the finished product right now and uh, let's see if the remote fits. So here it is printed and it looks really good for such a simple design. Let's get it hung on the wall and get that remote in it. Okay, so you can see it's a bit big, which is what I wanted, but you can always make yours a bit more of a snug fit if you get tighter to the dimensions of the remote. All in all, I'm pleased with how this turned out. All right, as I said in the beginning, this is my first time making any kind of tutorial-like video, and I did opt for a live narration instead of typing up what to say after the fact. To me, it feels like it helps me to not leave out anything I may overlook when I'm typing up what to say. So you tell me, how did I do? Was I clear enough with what I was doing and what I was saying? Any input is appreciated for the next set of tutorial videos I plan to make. And these tutorials are for you all. So I wanna make it as easy as possible for you to understand and follow along. Speaking of which, if you've made it this far, and if you followed along and made your own, feel free to share it with me. I'll be uploading this to Thingiverse, so if you make one, leave a make to show me. Even if you just print one of my other designs, I enjoy seeing other people printing out my creations. Also, I wanted to make a quick mention. I've reached over 250 subscribers as of right now, and I want to again quickly share my appreciation. Knowing that you all cared enough to subscribe and watch my videos gives me so much inspiration to continue making them. Whether it's 25 subscribers or 25 million, I appreciate you all the same. And it's because of you that I enjoy putting time into making these videos. So as long as you stay, I will too. And with that, I appreciate you tuning in, catch you in the next one, and as always, have the best day ever.